Bruce and Scale Dog. I boohoo. Well, hey, I just want to tell everybody Bye. hello. I think we've hello. all gone live now. <laughs> Well, it's it's pretty neat. We have a, a show going on here uh, right now, and I'm what I'm doing, Anita. Uh, we have our cousin Anita on here, and I'll tell you all about that, guys, in just a second. But uh, I am right now clicking onto my Facebook page so I can see our actual show going live. And uh, let's just hope and fingers crossed that it is. And Regina it's usually keeps live. an eye on us. Yay! We're live. Yeah, we're live. Woo Yay! Hello, Hello everybody. People. All right, I got to see some people signing in already, so uh, that's really Very cool. Good. It looks like we already have 3,000. It's either three or 3,000. I think it's 3,000. 3,000 viewers? Oh, yeah. Get yeah. out. Well, maybe three. I, I can't tell. <laughs> I can't see. I can't tell from where I am who's viewing. So you'll have to keep me updated on our family so I can say hey. I will. I, Chase will. Is on. I know a lot of the cousins tune in. Chase is on. Oh, now. Chase is here? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Anita, maybe I told you screen down just a little bit because we're seeing there you go. We're seeing top of her head. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do a watch party right now. Uh oh. Maybe I should go on. outside where it's prettier. <laughs> you, no, that's good lighting. You're going to see what the do you have amber lighting outside? That's always the best. Well, it's good old West Virginia lighting, sweetheart. Oh, man. <laughs> let me tell you. That's right. <laughs> And you don't have as much coal dust in the air, so you don't have that amber color. Anymore. That's right, but you know, coal keeps the lights on, so. It does, amen, that's right. <laughs> and our dads have enough uh, coal dust in their lungs, you know, to be able to attest to that, right? Isn't that the truth? I know, my friends call me, uh, always call me the coal miner's daughter. It's just a long story. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, hey, um, well, hey, Regina. <laughs> We're you look rapturing. You look amazing. You look very. Well, he always does. I look like a Star Trek geek. Wait, let me. I, there's a story behind it, and I'll go into it really fast. So I got bored. That's how that starts. And um, that's I was how it always starts, isn't it? That's <laughs> it how does. Happens. It does. It's the way it that's happens. How all of my trouble growing up started. <laughs> uh -huh, Troy, got uh -huh. bored. <laughs> Troy got bored. That should be the name of my book. And it ended with me getting a spanking. Beat? What it usually uh -oh. did. Whatever you want to call it. What well, it usually ends up like Wait up me getting a spanking and then Regina would cry and then she'd get a spanking. You know, I'm just saying. Regina never well, got spanked. It really Regina is. Well, never got spanked? <laughs> oh, 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 I got it more than she did. By, the by, other I think. always does. I well, think. it started with and Troy got bored. <laughs> and Troy got bored. So. <laughs> Troy got bored. He was on Facebook, and Facebook listens to you, and so does your cell phone. And they know the things you talk about and that you like. And I talk about Star Trek and blah blah blah. So now I'm getting Star Trek ads all the time. Oh. And uh, this shirt popped up, and it's just a polo shirt, like a normal polo shirt, and it's and it looked pretty good online. I'm like, huh, I might have to get that for Halloween. So I ordered it, and now China probably has all my personal information and ID and everything else. That's okay. But I have this snazzy shirt that just showed up an hour ago at my door we got their nasty virus oh. that's okay <laughs> <laughs> right that's enough we don't need any we don't need shirts from china too but i got one i don't know where it's from it could be india it could be iowa for all i know but anyway the shirt showed up and i i'm not real happy with the insignia it's kind of like this giant non-real i can't trip it i can't hit it oh, and talk hey. to anybody it's fake yeah i mean i have the pips fake. wait the pips and I got the red shirt. Do you guys know why the red shirt's significant in Star Trek? No, I don't. You, Regina? They're the first to die. <laughs> it's always D the guy. You chose in the red bad. Shirt. Oh. You chose bad. <laughs> I know. I know. They're I always the, the ones. One. Well, you know, next generation, it might not be the red shirt. I'm not sure. Captain is gold. I don't know. If anybody out there knows uh, what color shirts mean, what engineering, science, captain. And you're gonna die shirt. So they were I'm the expendable they, characters. I didn't think they meant anything actually. I just thought it was what was clean, is what they put on. I mean, that's what there you go. Uh, it, it yeah. is clean. It, it's clean. Well, I think it's clean. It it just came in the mail, but who knows how many people had it on and clean. returned it. It's not clean. It's clean. Oh wow. I should have uh, probably disinfected, but oh well, I'm on the enterprise. I, everything gets disinfected when you go through the it transporter. Does. Yes, it does. 
Mm -hmm. Let me just say, Troy, you look quite dapper as a Trekkie. And oh, thank uh, you. Thank you. I'm wearing my clothes that I played on the slicky slide and the swings on today. And I also took kids into the creek and we caught crawdads. And they actually said to me, well, that's a crawdad. And I said, really? Kids, shoes hey. off and let's go. And they didn't know what a crawdad was. <laughs> no. And I said, whoever finds the blue one gets $5. What? <gasps> Seen them. They were like, yes. <laughs> I, can't tell I have if it so much or not. fun on my job and I get paid for it. <laughs> Regina, you're going to have to you monitor what kind of toxic, I'm having trouble. You never know what kind of toxic waste is in that water. There could have been a blue one. <laughs> not in that, West Virginia, girl. They're natural. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have natural crawdads <laughs> in the motherland. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, everybody, the, the wonderful, ravishing lady below us, of course, first of all, the one over to my this side on my screen is my sister, Regina. And uh, she's there visiting, of course, beautiful Downton Abbey, which is, yes. of course, we descended directly from, we did our uh, DNA yes. spit test. and We come from the Crawleys. You two were talking about crawfish, so that makes what? sense. What? I thought we came from the Hatfields and McCoys, girl. Oh, wait a minute. Anita, I forgot you were on here. You know our real story, don't you? <laughs> Come on now, Troy. Okay. Oh, come on. I tell we, people okay. not to mess with me because I'm related to both the Hatfields and the McCoys. That's kind of crazy. Girl. Yeah. Uncle, yeah. Uncle Devil Ants comes out of me sometimes. I have oh. to tell you. Really? I have no idea about that. I have no recall of anything like that. Oh, oh is that Lord, right? Girl, you lie. I'm sorry, but people from Downton Abbey shouldn't have a Southern accent, Miss Regina. Oh, you lie like a rug. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our fabulous so we will always call you cousin anita klein because yes. we're all kleins yes. at heart but then booth you're you're anita booth so you're married yeah and uh beautiful kids soon to be, soon to be leg oh what? really yeah <laughs> anita well, we want to hear all about this so you have got okay it. so i have to set the stage real quick so yeah. We have a need on here to verify all the stories we've told about her over the last. I will tell no lies. <laughs> several episodes. Cousin Anita is one of the culprits that used to go to Grandma Baker's farm, and uh, we used to get into all kinds of unbelievable. Unbelievable. Stuff. Yeah, and I used to love it. it my gosh, Fun. it. Fun. When I found Fun. out Cindy and Anita and Karen were coming to the farm, uh, I would just. Regina and I would just scream. We we jump up and down, and get oh, excited. That was the bomb. We did. I mean, it was the bomb. It was like going to Disneyland. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it it was. really was. And then we had Robbie and Jimmy, of course. And then um, oh yeah, that just stirred the pot beyond Sorry. anything. And you know, yeah. I was always innocent in this. I was always the one that was like, you know, <laughs> you really please shouldn't Lord. do that. <laughs> we have another please. special guest. Oh Hi. no way! Hey mom. <laughs> How Hi, Auntie that? Linda. You look beautiful. Thank you. Well, you do too. Well, thank you. I love your hair. I do thank too. That's <laughs> just thank you is all you need to say. Uh, that's right. That's right. Just <laughs> think, shake it and just, just smile. That's all. Work it. Work it. <laughs> you are styling and profiling, girl. You <laughs> are. You are. Uh oh, Regina disappeared and came back. She did. I'm going to disappear. Just listen. Oh yeah. Okay. So mom's role in this show, by the way, is she sits on the other side of the table from Regina and makes comments and faces the entire time. She does. She does exactly <laughs> what she does. And she censors all those four-letter words. Hey, Amen. I'm just saying. Yeah. Just you know, saying. like Pentecostal and those kind. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Anita real quick. So yes, Anita, I, well, I want to get into the story about your new man, and I want to know more about, so let everybody know where you're from, where you live, mm -hmm. how we're related, and then we'll correct <laughs> well, your story when you're finished. I am born and raised in Southern West Virginia, beautiful. Amen. Baton. Amen. I mean, I actually get paid to live in almost heaven. You believe that? No, and I, I get don't. to travel our beautiful state, and I love mm -hmm. my job. I I work as a professional consultant with CPS and um, foster kids. And well, what's I get CPS? Paid, what's that stand for? Um, Child Protective Services. And every uh, state has one through the Department of Health and Human Resources. 
And I get to, my goal is to work in the reunification of families that have been estranged due to drugs or drug use, oh, or drug wow. charges, domestic charges. And it um, takes about a That's year amazing. for that to happen according to court order. So I become an intimate part of their family and they become an intimate part of mine. Um, so it takes about a wow. year to do which part for you to get your certification or it takes a year for the these um, parolees to meet the qualifications oh. in order to be reunited with their families legally and that's if they have no violations in between like positive drug screens and so forth okay um, they cannot miss visits and so I travel right now over 42 states I'm in the middle of launching a new office in wow. Fairmont West Virginia Marion County Oh, wow. I also um, am about to do the same in Mon County. 42 states or 42 counties? 42 counties. counties. Wow. Out of our 55. Yeah. Wow. So I drive a lot, and but I get paid That's to so have cool. fun. I take families to playgrounds. Um, I counsel them in um, family unit and reunification. And we cook together. We play together. We work together. We cry together. And I get to tell them about God. You know, I, wow. I had a little girl just last week. To, she said, Miss Nita, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. She said, do you go to church? Yep, I go to church when I can. Right now I'm watching church online. Yeah. She said, oh, do you know Jesus? And I said, oh, yes, honey, I know Jesus. And oh, she wow. said, will, will you tell me about Jesus? And I said, Climb up here on my lap and let me tell you about Jesus. And <laughs> that's the best part of my job. I get that's paid so cool. to do that. So. That's so cool. I, it's got to be hard, like, when you go into situations and you see some really horrible stuff. It's and how do you deal with that? Like, what do you do? Cause well, you, you, now, yeah. now, let's think about this. You, you know, we, we, we've already established we came from the bloodline of Hatfields and McCoys. <laughs> our... our ancestors came right off of huff creek west virginia all of these look it up on google true. We <laughs> they are true and authentic are of both I mean, and the mccoys yes we are and we yeah. had cousins named ott and oopy and they they died not too long ago so now come on let's be real ott and oopy are dead i didn't ott know that died yeah tommy toller uh, buried them uh -huh. yeah right but, but, you know, my dad tells the story in Mingo County where all this, the Klein. The flathead. Yeah. Flat there there <laughs> were the onion heads and there were the flatheads. <laughs> and we, we, are we, part of the, story as well. we are part of the onion heads. Yes, we are. Our brains fully developed. Fully. Okay, and Oopy didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> I am so not an onion. I'm so not a flathead. That, that's so And cute. it's true. You know how the, and the flathead babies it, got it's their name? True. <laughs> you know how the flathead babies got their name? Yes, ma'am. There, there, well, there was a Baptist preacher who was the community doctor, and, a, and our, our Aunt Moselle went into labor. Aunt Moselle? And Aunt, Aunt Moselle. Moselle. And it was Moselle from off of Huck's Creek. Oh, and when heritage. she started to push, the preacher told her, his, her husband said, get that feather and tickle her. He said, what? <laughs> he said, get that feather and tickle her. It'll help her push. <laughs> he said, well, where do I tickle her? He said, where do you think you tickle her? Oh, no. <laughs> and he did. And she pushed so hard that baby shot out of her and oh, hit wow. the headboard and a got a flat head. Flat head? It's flat. And why yeah. she was backwards in the bed is another story. We probably yeah. figure that out. Well, you know, in those days they had feather ticks, so <laughs> the bottom was higher than the top, honey. Oh, there is a reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the story uh, Dad tells. I don't know if it's true or not. That was the top I'm the, of I'm the oldest that. of the Klein uh, cousins. Are you? you? Are. Yes, I am. And there's oh, 10 really? of us, you know that? We're, there's 10 of us. Well, actually, Annette is about five weeks older than me. I've never, you know, I haven't seen her I'm, since I was like five. I've never You know, she before. was uh, one time Miss Florida. Yeah, really? I know her mom, I know her mom won Miss Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and Peggy. Or teenage Florida, maybe she was, but. Yeah, because Peggy won Miss Florida. That's when Mason, yeah. our uncle, I was married a teenager, her. Uh, 
well, no, I was in grade school, I think, when Mason and Peggy got married. But, you know, now um, Dad and Pat are the only remaining um, siblings. Yep. Dad being the oldest, and he's 79, and um, he's doing fantastic, you know. Um, I think I miss him. He's your a dad great man. You know, Dad, so exactly nobody like knows what it's like, and you guys do, because your dad was yeah. military, but I tell people all the yeah. time, until you've grown up with a Marine drill sergeant, you ain't <laughs> grown up. <laughs> I remember so your old. stories about that. Ooh, girl. Let me tell and you. you were the oldest of the three daughters in his family yeah. so if yes. the dishes weren't cleaned right i remember this if the dishes weren't yeah. cleaned just right you yes. were the one that got in trouble and had to go Dad in there and took clean them all and... out of the cabinet and honest to god one day he found egg on a fork and we washed dishes for six hours what yes oh we never did that again <laughs> oh, i bet you didn't although but, i'll have to say regina and i were better water. better what's that I said, did she start throwing forks away? Oh, that would be funny. That oh, would be God, no. I would have had a public <laughs> lynching if I'd done that. <laughs> no, we used to go out, and I remember we had to clean cars. Like, uh, we came over, we were at your house when we were kids, and yep. the dads made us uh, wash and clean the cars. And so I'm in there, and I'm doing this meticulous stuff with Q-tips, and I'm down into whatever, yeah. and I'm doing all this stuff. I got, and, you're, and you were like, what are you doing? Why? And Cindy was looking at me, your sister Cindy, our cousin. She's yeah. like, what are you doing? Just wipe it off a little bit, make it shiny and move on. And I'm like, no, no, dad looks at all this stuff. And we're in there. I'm going into all this. And finally, I just kind of backed up. I'm like, okay, they've got it easier when it comes to shoe shining and car cleaning than we do. <laughs> well, now, see, you guys know what that's like, because both of our yeah, fathers we were military. Yeah, they were, but they were so much alike. I, I'm, I, I've always thought of them as twins. Yeah, they the are, only difference much. is your dad um had way higher standards because he was a preacher a minister and my dad had um evil standards <laughs> <laughs> he was a beer drinker oh mercy well you know i was yes. just well, thinking about that, that. So just... we are all descendants of what i call the gag um syndrome which is generational alcoholic geneticism yeah it's a new okay. term i made it up you know how nurses are oh, it's true it's true and and i mean we come literally from oh, about 100 alcoholic. years of generational alcoholics yeah. i mean yeah. true moonshiners i mean they In should fact, study our livers they probably could they, last on the yeah. moon and so you know our tolerance for alcohol is way above the norm <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't know i mean really. yes you would you were at wbu with me don't you i lie? know i know you know too, but <laughs> regina was too i got stories on her but i'm just yeah. saying well, i was no, not at wvu with the two of you <laughs> you were with me you were one year girl she yeah. was actually much much live, more reserved I didn't live she with was. no you didn't live yeah. with us you didn't I was, but see i was a bandy so like i was predestined to be a bandy the wvu marching band is the absolute best in the I nation i didn't know what a bandy was it until you just realized incredible i spent four always years in that. the pride we were the last band to march out of the old tunnel and the first one to march on the new field really? and yes it was a phenomenal experience the best four years of my life don't I remember regret. a bit of it <laughs> I wanted to be in the band. I wanted to be a trombone player. I played trumpet. We had 76 trumpets and I was incredible. the third from the top. What? I didn't know that. I could blow some horn, girl. <laughs> man, oh man, that's really cool. Do you ever play awesome. it anymore? I actually do. Sometimes in church, I was in orchestra really? and jazz band at WVU and I, I have a minor in music theory. So I, I have a really versatile background, which allows me to teach almost anything. I mean, I speak French and Spanish. I can teach advanced Girl, anatomy, physiology, chemistry, physics, biology, music theory. Wow. So, yeah, I mean. Oh, you're right. Sorry, Chris Gale just popped in. I'm watching. I'm trying to keep looking at our chat rooms. I mean, you'll have to I'm tell like, me who's there. The comments, though. Well. There's a guy, Chris Gale, who's from Missouri and, and where Regina's from and all that. And he's just like, Troy's wearing a red shirt. He got it on the Enterprise. He goes, however, that history has proven that doesn't end well. So 
yeah. So it is the red shirt. It's the red shirt. What about you, Regina? Have you got some people tracking I have on people your that are coming in, but I am not getting comments yet. No right, family. Some comments. No what? No what? No family yet? No. Oh. oh okay. Chase. I've got I don't know, there's eleven, twelve thousand people. I think that's what that says. <laughs> so they must all be family. I don't know. It's all the Hatfields and McCoy from there Kentucky, you go. West Virginia there you go. In. There you go. But I totally interrupted you what you were saying because I just got excited when I saw somebody responded to my fabulous shirt. Well, I, I think I capped everything you asked me to do. <laughs> you know. On that part? On that part? On that part, yeah. 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 Did so you do, my, go ahead, Regina. You know, so I have a few questions for you, Anita. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Okay, so um, you, uh, you know, I've, we've been uh, cousins forever, but yeah. Facebook friends, not incredibly long, uh, mm -hmm. but your posts have changed drastically, actually, for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One is because you seem to have met Jesus. And oh. the other <laughs> is you seem to have met another person uh, yeah. Well, I want to hear about oh. both of those stories. Oh, well, there we go. Stage set. Okay. Locked well, and loaded. I, my relationship, <laughs> I mean, you guys know we were raised very similarly, although you guys were raised in a very stricter um, foundation right. of faith than we were. Um, our parents took us to church. Your parents went with you to church. Um, big difference in your That's foundational. A really good point. Yeah, foundational faith is not built that way, let's just say. Yeah. Yeah. So it took me a lot longer to understand what you guys had. And to be honest, I was always envious of it because really? I, didn't, I didn't know how to get I that. I didn't know how to get that. And, you know, my sister Karen, yeah. who is a devout Christian, yes, she is. I always envied her for the very same thing. And um, I think what was missing in my life was, you know, the world is so full of distractions and, um, you know, I've been through some pretty tough times. You have been through it. Yeah, much more than anybody should. And, and you know, our beliefs as children were very misconstrued because, you know, our grandfather, our paternal grandfather, who claimed to be a self-ordained minister, was actually a rapist. Yep. yep. That was very hard for me to align in my heart and faith. Yeah, that's your he example came, of what a Christian is when you're a kid, right? So you're like, yeah. and he came to live with us when he was paroled from Florida with the agreement that wow. he never he never entered the state again. And, uh, you know, I became his victim after that. And um, that, oh, my that gosh, that's chills. He, that really? Time. Do I did not know that. No, nope. uh, most, pe most people don't. So lots of therapy later. Um, oh, my gosh. You know, Anita. I've been a survivor. You know, he was. Oh, you're gonna make me from, totally freaking cry. He was paroled from the state of Florida with the agreement that my dad make sure he never entered again. And um, oh my gosh. Sometime after that, he finally left, and so you know, my childhood wow. was not like everybody else's, and um, it destroyed me for a long time, and it has taken me, thank God, to I'm 56 <laughs> years old, and. Um, I finally wow. get it, you know. Um, I finally feel like my heart is full, and God has um, saved me, and um, nobody wow. can take that away from me, not ever. No, and I found a man who has the very same beliefs, and it's just so encouraging, and who loves me just the way I am, and um, for all my. I can't fault. wait to meet him. Yeah, I he's cannot a wait. He's a wonderful guy, and I mean, oh. I couldn't. I couldn't have written the script any better if I had the pleasure to do that. So well, he's already family. Tell him we are. He's totally yeah. in, on board. I mean, it doesn't. You just gotta have him. a heart. <laughs> I've warned <laughs> him. <laughs> That's good. He's, he's, he's cool. He really is. He's, he's very uh, afraid. Yeah. So wow, I'm that's happy. amazing. I mean, I'm like totally spiritually, physically, mentally happy for the first time in my life, probably. Uh, I, it's just amazing where you are right now. Yes. I mean, I know some of the stories and we both, we all know some of the stories about each other growing up together and, yeah. and, and being pulled apart. Like one of the things, um, dad really did keep us, he, he really did isolate us in a lot of ways with the church and, and intentionally, not from you. 
not from you or from uh, like our immediate cousins and all that. Right. Yeah. But he did. There was a lot of history that tracks mm -hmm. back in our family that was kind of rough. And, and there were a lot of wonderful, wonderful It was people ugly, there. truly. It was But ugly. there was some bad stuff. There was yeah. some bad stuff. But that, he made a point of keep, I, I use the word shielding, you know, mm -hmm. shielding us from that because he, he was able to get away from the ugliness of that. Yeah. Not, yeah. The, they went not, through. The, not the family, you know, yeah. of that, you know, like right. you guys, you know, Jane. But it was Jane. family though, Gina. No, I mean that Some of it. his siblings, our, yeah. our first cousins, yeah. yes. um, didn't want to keep us away from that part. Right, uh, right. And, uh, and our grandmother. Uh, but he definitely kept us away from uh, our paternal grandfather, who I will yes. always call Mr. Klein. I've never Me called him too. anything else. And remember, Troy, when we went to the funeral and I laughed. And said, <laughs> I should not laugh, but we. Well, you I said, "Why laughed. are you laughing?" And I said, yeah. "I just am." But nobody understood that. I know. didn't understand that. Although I was laughing too, because I knew yeah. enough. Yeah. To know that it was uncomfortable for all of us, and I was only going. I made Dad take me, um, yeah. because I was like, "I I want to go there. I want to see this. I want to whatever." Mm -hmm. And so, you, me, Cindy. Was that the, it was just the three of us? Aaron yeah. was there and Gail and Jim, her husband and Tim, Cindy's husband. And Regina and couldn't come, right? You weren't there, Regina? That wouldn't let me go. Oh, well, really? I went and I'm not ashamed to admit, I went to make sure that was the right person in the right casket without a pulse. And yep. I'll just say that bluntly. Yep. Well, yeah. amen. I mean, I totally get to me. that. Yeah, it meant nothing to me. Wow. But you guys are so look at us. I mean, this is what I thank God for every day. Is, you know, look at our family. We know, are we're happy. phenomenal creatures we're that have evolved from the pits of hell. You know, yeah, look truly. at you guys, both truly. of you doctors. I've got kids that are doctors. I've got nieces and nephews that are doctors. I'm a master. I'm just saying. I mean, but <laughs> you've always been the master. Come on now. The master. So a master troll. But I mean, I'm aren't just, we blessed? We are so incredibly blessed that it yeah, just doesn't me. And, you know, yeah. your kids and my kids and it, it just my goes cats. on. You know, God will outgive you every time. If That's you true. Just make it through the storm. Our pastor said to me, you know, you have to go through a lot of storms to know what it's like to be on the mountaintop. You really, really do. And that's so true. Yeah. We've been through it. I mean, and a lot of people in their lives are, especially right now. Can you imagine? Yes. You know, there's like, I don't know how many, thou there's a thousand new cases or something or deaths a day. It's deaths that are happening around this country a day. And a lot of people are going through the trauma. Regina and I were talking about this of They've got their family issues and whatever. Now there's some isolation going on. They freak out. They're like, I'm tired of being away from my family. They go, they're around <laughs> their family. And I, and it really, you can feel people who might be listening to this, who are going through this right now, yes. is that they didn't know that they had the virus, the COVID, and they may have translated it, given it to someone and they died or they're in critical condition. And the guilt mm -hmm. that goes, goes with that is got to be overwhelming. So that's going on right now by the, thousands of people around the country and it is and survivor's in fact, guilt yeah there's a hot topic in the mental health world right now because we're dealing with um you know our kids have been out of school since march and we aren't going back now because of the incidents of uh, yeah. escalation here in raleigh county alone glad to hear you're not going back yeah but you yeah. know i'm sad about that because our kids yeah. need the support of um mm -hmm steadiness and um you know um organization that a classroom yep. provides and they are not getting the same quality of education they just can't uh, right now even though we're teaching remotely it's not the same it's not the it, same you mm -hmm. know kids learn best when they're with kids of their own age group um and that's that's verified and um yeah. they are not getting that right yeah. now it's, it's a terrible secondary it's an outcome of this but the uh, the other side of that of course that we're all is. aware of is that people are going to die if they go back to school by even more and That's we true. know that because it's such a contagious disease and kids are going to get it and bring it home and the grandparents and parents and we don't want that to happen but at the same time you know these kids rely on um especially kids of fixed or low income 
households that they get their nutrition when they go to school. There are a lot of kids in this country that way. Especially and they can't here. go there now. Yeah. So the, the domino effect is tremendous because you know we have farmers now that are going bankrupt all over the country because there's nowhere to send their food. So they're trashing it. They're running milk out onto the ground. Um, oh my gosh. There are no schools and no restaurants that are buying and they're going bankrupt by the thousands. Yeah. Um, you know, back, was it Roosevelt? Like way, way, way back. And he was trying to figure out how to get people jobs. And they made up a bunch of jobs with federal funding. And it was dairy farming because yes. they were going out of business. And so they ended up producing all this milk, but then there weren't enough people to drink all the milk. You know, they were making all these jobs. So they ended mm -hmm. up making cheese uh, uh -huh. out of it. And, and they put it in caves, commodity cheese, yeah. And dad used to love, so mom, oh so our God. dads from Southern West Virginia to coal camps, they were yep. the poor, the poorest. I mean, where yes. there's like ice and snow blowing through the windows and they huddled like puppies in the bed to stay warm with a pot yes. belly stove in the house. And he used to love, uh, he called it, <laughs> he didn't call it commodity cheese. Dad called it calamity cheese. That's what I grew up thinking it was called. <laughs> Exactly. I, same thing. The same thing. <laughs> calamity cheese. So when I first said that to someone, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, we, we like calamity cheese. And they're like, what? I'm like, calamity cheese. And I'm like, you mean commodity? Like, um, <laughs> no. Calamity. <laughs> calamity. <laughs> it is kind so, of has yeah. a melodious uh, tune to it. It does. Well, it is what it, we, what it is that. It was calamity cheese and now they have all that cheese and finally they were starting to divvy it out to the people with low income especially it was good cheese but they yeah, had to yep. give it out and that was a way to preserve it so who knows what we'll do these days it's hard because on one side of the argument you're like yeah like go back to school or do whatever you need to do but then a big percentage of us are going to die so what do you do and uh -huh. it's where, where we come in we have to all help each other as much as we can like family members yeah. anybody else going through it right now some people don't have family members that are going to step up for them so that's the bigger problem that's true too many too many people yeah i know it so what's uh, going on in your guys lives right now well why don't we start with miss regina um, what's in your life no, yeah nothing. no nothing nothing new just oh, sitting in st james I'm missouri so doing nothing just come here. on dr klein let's hear it well, um, well, okay there, Anita. I, um, I work as a hospital administrator. I am a nursing leader and I um, am a consultant. And I do, you know, I go from contract to contract. And um, I, I like to come in and when I'm called to come in and uh, do a job, I do anything from a nurse manager up to the CNO uh, mm -hmm. of a hospital. And um, it's really, really cool because I get to look at the, at the unit or the organization with brand new eyes to that organization. And mm -hmm. I can see things for what they are, as opposed to what, you know, this is the way we've always done it. This is comfortable. What's wrong with this? And new eyes come in and you can really, really see what's working well, what's not working well. Uh, and, you know, start pulling, kind of pulling it apart to put it back together you know, and, and mm -hmm. make sure that the standards are followed, make sure that all of that happens. And it's uh, typically um, anywhere from 90 days, six months to a year, depending on what is needed there. Uh, but when uh, this pandemic uh, hits, uh, the hospitals just started, they clamped down and said, mm -hmm. we aren't bringing in any consultants. We're not bringing any uh oh, she froze. Take a drink. Sorry. Inside, we're going to do what we have to do. Oh, I froze. He started a drink game when I freeze. He drinks. Am I back? You're, You're back. back. Okay. <laughs> I better start getting my skin in the mm. <laughs> um, So the hospitals said, you know, we, we really need to maintain our resources. And uh, if it's not an absolute necessity to bring in any outside consulting, uh, people, then we're not going to. And uh, totally understandable, absolutely understandable. But for those people who work as the consulting people, uh, it's, you know, it's caused devastating, 
Yeah, it's caused the contracts to really dry up. Uh, wow. So I have a couple different recruiters that I'm working with, and I, uh, you know, I look through a lot of different avenues like LinkedIn or mm -hmm. you know, you know, things like that. Yep. Uh, or I do cold calls to hospitals, or I look at them online. No, I look at them online and you know call and uh, you know say, hey, this is this is what I do. I see that you have this opening. I could come in as an intern, interim uh, person or a temporary person to help yep. you know bridge that gap for you. Uh, but so far, you know, people are saying, uh, well, maybe eventually, but not yet. So that's given me time to uh, be at home uh, and, you know, try to get some things organized, you know, at the house, in my heart, in my head, uh, I love that. Re realign my priorities. Uh, mm. And, um, you know, I have three different books that are inside me that I'm in the process of trying to put, starting them on paper. Wow. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm not wasting the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, you know, the two kids, we have two kids, uh, Christopher and Cassandra. Cassandra has two little girls. And so I get to be Aww. yeah, yeah uh, to them. I have Alice who is five and Lucy who is three. And Aww. yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and then Christopher uh, who just got married in June. Uh, and oh, I, wow. I get to, uh, and then he, uh, he's on travel uh, right now. So uh, work travel. And so I, um, <laughs> So I um, am being able to, you know, form a really, really good relationship with his new bride. Uh, she's That's so great. awesome. I really like her. She is a sweetheart. Absolutely part of our family. And yeah. I, um, you know, so I'm, um, you know, that's kind of taking up my time. And so before Christopher started this work travel, I told him that I, I asked him what translation of the Bible was his favorite. And he told me. And so I went and got one of those Bibles. And I read it all. I marked it up. I underlined it. I put notes in it. I highlighted it. I, I mean, it was like this mad read. And Just it, like your dad did. It was a little less than three months that I, I read constantly uh, for him. And I got so much out of that. And then I, right before he went on his work travel, I, I handed him this Bible that was just marked up, highlighted, written up. <laughs> and it, he was like, I can't believe you actually did it. I can't believe you got That's it. That's amazing. But, um, what a yeah, gift. Oh, days. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that for Cassandra, but she doesn't know. Um, unless she's on. <laughs> unless and she's being on a listening. grandma is tops all that, you know? Oh. It tops all that. It's just, uh, cool. it's the best. That's true. That's so true. So I'm going to yeah, so that's... wait for just one second, and then I'll be right yeah. back. So Troy, what's going okay. on? Okay. All right. Well, all right. So uh, the reason I'm such a nerd, which I always have been with Star Trek, as you know, Anita, because we used to go into the bar and I'd make everybody play Star Trek every once in a while. Yes, we did. Pretend, yes, we did. We'd throw corn cobs at each other and eggs and anything else. In the days explode. of the slea stack. Remember that? The days <laughs> of the slea stack. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I had a background. I did the whole slea stack background of one of our shows. I did. We still we still talk about that. And if anybody doesn't know what the slea stack are, look up the words "Land of the Lost" and you'll find it. it's this old show, way back in the seventies that was done. It was first time they used green screen and chroma king, yes. and they made it tried to make it look like they were in prehistoric lands. And it was so bad. It was, it was so really bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we, we, we did it. that. We loved it. And then I, I, I taught school for a long time. And then eventually I um, did a master's in educational technology and that opened my eyes to National Geographic and NASA and all this stuff. So I just sent cold, email, cold emails out uh, to people. I didn't know anyone. And uh, NASA had a few people from NASA that called me back in year 2000. I couldn't believe it. And uh, I had made a little website and put my resume, extend resume on it. And like, hey, I'm looking for a job and I think this could be cool. And I'd lived on the Navajo reservation and had been in uh, Peace Corps in Africa for a little while after, by that point. And because of the cross-cultural awareness and all of that, it, I think it gave me an ad job. And so I was able to, to get that job <clears throat> and I've been there ever since, you know, with all of that. So now um, I'm the director, which I love that. I'm the director of a maker space at Goddard Space Flight Center called the Steam Innovation Lab. So it's really cool. It's, 
it's a makerspace where um, anybody can bring in like 3D printers, um, coding and electronics, virtual reality, augmented reality, anything <laughs> they can just imagine with. And they can come in there and explore, tear it apart, turn it into something new, add some really cool NASA content to it. And then, uh, which we have access to a lot of NASA content. And once they put that in there, then we pump those ideas out to other maker spaces and schools. So right now I'm up to my brow and uh, figuring out how to create a national network. So uh, that's any maker space or library or anybody that has a place where they invent and build and create. It's kind of like the old shop classes from the old days have been kind of revamped yeah. with laser yeah. cutters and wood cutters and coding. Now they're By called the way, I, I sell you yeah. to the schools where I work since I work in the school yeah. system all over the state right now. Oh, I awesome. sell your program. Yeah. I have well, you know what? Phone, so. Well, I'm going to, I'll send you all the stuff about how they can get okay. connected to the NASA network. And that's going to happen. We're doing the testing right now. Mm -hmm. And so by the fall, we're, we'll have a uh, network that's ready to roll out. So anybody that wants to be a NASA outpost as a makerspace, even if it's just you have a 3D printer and that's all you've got, or you have a bunch of scissors and tape and you're going to mm -hmm. make cool, innovative stuff out of it, you can be an outpost. All you have to do is just what? submit. I'll and pass you the can word. be a NASA connection. I will pass the word along. Yeah, you know, I'm so exciting. I'm so envious. Every time I look at you, you're somewhere else in the world. And I'm so late. Envious. Well, not now. I'm in DC the whole yeah. time. But yeah, no, the job's taking me to a lot of places. Uh, the yeah, one was really um, India. That, wow. Yeah. India was amazing. They actually, some people called me and I thought it was a joke. I really did. So I was at, a, it was an email. And I was at a conference and I got this email and it said, we'd like to formally invite you to Northern Punjab, India, and, and we'd like for you to give a TEDx talk. And I'm like, oh, there's no way that's true. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way that's true. And so I checked it all out and ran it by a bunch of people. And they're like, yeah, no, this is, these are real people. And turns okay. out they uh, brought me over and I, I was able to speak to, oh gosh, I forget how many thousand kids but I went to several schools and maker spaces and I gave my talk and uh, then they took me all over northern India to show me how amazing that that country is and and what was embarrassing for me was that they would ask me they would tell me about all these wars of these sultans and all these things that happened in India and it really I'd never heard of any of that I knew there mm -hmm. I knew about India but mm -hmm. in school growing up India is not a giant part of the curriculum. I mean, it's just not. I mean, right. I didn't learn anything really other than some foods and some basic cultural and religious beliefs and things like that about India. But these big wars that were monumental, then these yeah. palaces are expansive. Oh my yeah. gosh. And the ruins are still there. They're bigger than any palace I've ever seen. And uh, so it was a phenomenal. Your job is just amazing. I'm so envious. It, you know I'm what? I, it's funny. Well, you I should. You, sent, you should come with you me. You sent pictures one time and you were in Bangkok or somewhere. Yeah. And I, yeah. I've always wanted to go to Bangkok. I don't know why, really. Um, yeah. But it's been a fascinating place of my destinations, my bucket oh, list. I don't know why. It's that song that used to be out. Yes, there you go. <laughs> one night in Bangkok makes yeah, a hard yeah. man humble. That was when we were teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, we went to uh, China and that was... China's amazing. I mean, it, it, it's, um, it's huge. And um, we got to see the Terracotta Warriors, that whole oh. thing where, and that wasn't actually a work-related trip. That was a trip that we took and we went and we, there was a huge uh, sandstorm happening and the pollution at that time was crazy. It was insane. You can even see the end of the runway when we landed, mm -hmm. in, I forget which airport it was. And so all of that, the wind blew all of that dust and pollution down over parts of China while we were there. And so when we went to see the Terracotta Warriors, it looked like being a Star Trek freak, it looked like we we're on the planet Vulcan. I mean, everything was like this Martian greenish or a brownish yeah. reddish haze, everything Wow. Uh, for days. And then you look and you see in the midst of it, you see these uh, Terracotta Warriors by the thousands that this emperor had created for his afterlife. And he had people spend years making these individualized warriors that they then buried when he died. So wow. this entire 
thousands of fleets of terracotta warriors are underground. And uh, and soon as he died, the people hated him so much that they raided all of the tunnels and the caves and destroyed as many of the warriors they had spent their lives building as possible because they, they felt really abused by it. But the part they've been able to preserve is just an incredible snap, yeah. you know, snapshot into the history of that part of China. So that was kind of cool. Oh. But um, okay. the thing is, and this is something I want to bring it all back around to what we all do, it turns out in our lives, our cousins' mm -hmm. lives, yes. is um, the thing I asked myself, and I was talking to people about this the other day, the thing I asked myself at the end of my work week and whatever is, is this. It's like, it's what I'm doing right now with my life and the, the impact that I'm having. Is it actually changing some kid's life who doesn't have hope? Who doesn't? There, who yeah. came from some of the beginnings that we've been talking about, and Amy. the only thing they might be able to look up to is the nighttime sky and see the stars. Yeah. And if I can give them a connection to something they can do when they look at those stars, something they can do with their lives and give them some extra hope, then my life is meant it's worthwhile. Yeah. How and, gratifying! Um, oh, that yeah. just gives me chills. It's so gratifying. Yeah. So fulfilling. That truly is our hearts. I mean, that's that's really? the way we all think. I mean, look and, at job. And I say it all the time. It's worth any million dollar paycheck. At the it end is. of the day, when you when I go to bed, I go to my garden and I talk to God, and I I always say, Lord, you know, hope I've been your vessel today, and you know, if I've affected one person, one child, one parent in a positive way, then I've yeah. done my job. I've done my job. And that's so freaking true. It is. It, it's just true. It sounds cliche and sounds corny. It but, really does. But when you, when you get down to it, when you're like, why am I here? What am I doing? What are these things? And you go through all these questions. It really does measure. It does boil down does. to what's and, your and purpose. Troy, you guys know it's at the heart of who we are and it is. where we came from and what we were created to be. I think God, um, you know, gifts people with children because he has a sole purpose for every one of us. And um, yes. it takes some of us a long time to nail that purpose. But once yeah. you have it in your hands, it is the most unbelievable tool you'll ever possess. Better than any degree or any paycheck or any experience. It's just yeah. what you do to make your time here count. Right. Well, it doesn't um, really matter how you get gone. there. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you get there. The, no, whatever you have to do in your life to get yeah. to the point of an awareness that you're part of this greater universe and, and God and, and all of it, it becomes open and real to you. Whatever you have to do to get there, you know, yeah. and we judge ourselves so harshly. We judge of ourselves course. worse than we do other people. Of course we do. You know, it made me think of it because when you said uh, it, you know, how long sometimes it takes for people to get there. People judge themselves harshly They're well, about that. They'll say, my gosh, I was 60 before I realized that I could let that go and I could do all these there things. And they're just now. And the thing is, the point is, is you got there. You, you made it yeah. to that point And some well, people don't. You know what I have found? And it's taken me, like I said, years of therapy and soul searching. And, you know, I've picked myself apart and put myself back together so many times. I didn't even Amen. recognize who I was looking at. And um, at the end of the day, I am so eternally grateful just to be here and be a part of what's going on in our lives right now, because it's significant. I mean, it, it's just 2020. But we're alive in just 2020 in this very second, and um, yeah. we may not be here tomorrow. And we've all That's experienced, right. um, you know, how quickly death can take people from you. Oh man! And it wants to um, swallow you and keep you in a vacuum that you don't want to get out of. Um, and you know, that's that's a whole journey in itself. But if you can grow from that and teach from that and use it as a positive ex experience in everything you do in life and be grateful for every single breath you take. I always post sunrises on my Facebook page because I think every sunrise is a gift. And um, it's not only a big giant burning star, but it's the light that God gives us, you know. Yeah. And if you can't see that light, my friend, you are <laughs> blind, you know. <laughs> 
and, it's all I, around and us, I, right? I start my day every day. I never miss a sunrise. Yeah. Never. That's so beautiful. I love that. I walk six miles every morning at sunrise. And I just experienced such an awesome relationship, you know, because of that. Um, you know, that makes me think, I want to ask you, and I know this is really mm -hmm. deep and personal, but you mentioned something earlier in, in our talk um, mm -hmm. about the trauma you went through with our mm -hmm. paternal grandfather on dad's side. Yes. And it just, you blew Regina and I away with that. And that was a horrible thing. Anybody, and many people go through stuff like that. Yes. How, Too many. How did you, what did you do? Like, what was it? in your steps of faith and life and whatever that brought you to the point where you are now to where you could say to someone, I know this happened to me, it probably happened to you. And, and um, if you've been sexually abused or raped or any of that, mm -hmm. what would you say to someone like who, maybe that just happened? I mean, well, what on earth do you say to someone like? This is how I come to live with this and it's a very fragile thing in my life, but don't you know, you, like you well, don't do that because I will too. And <laughs> you know, come I'm to amazed you know, at who you are. I'm just like, wow. You can't I'm identify cool. your identification if you've been um, sexually abused, particularly uh, as a child and by someone who loves you. You quickly identify love in a very different way. Oh, um, wow. yeah. Yeah. And it's taken me a long time um, to um, find myself um, worthy of um, being a recipient of the kind of love that I envied in other people. <laughs> I was. If you have any idea how much we, if we'd known. <laughs> it, you know, but I couldn't talk about it because, you know. I know. Guys, I don't blame you. You guys love this man too. And I mean, I love No, mom. we didn't. We didn't know him. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, but see, he lived with us, so I loved yeah. him. And, and I okay. didn't know okay. that when he called me to sit on his lap that there was a different reason. Yeah. I thought it was great. You know, we used to get excited when his truck came in the driveway and, um, oh my you know. Gosh. Wow. But your identification with love as a child is so construed. Um, so my response, and I know this now because of therapy, and thank God there are some great therapists out there. And, you know, I've yes. been active as a mental health um, licensed um, art registered nurse Holy for a long train. time. And um, it's been very productive in my journey back and out of this because I kind of morphed myself into this unrecognizable, very unlovable person by becoming extremely wow. obese. I was obese most of my life, as you can remember, from the age uh -huh. of about seven. The yeah. abuse took place for about a year and a half when I was five. And um, so I morphed myself yeah. underneath all this fat. And I felt like it protected me because then I got this big old chip on my shoulder and it was my defense. Um, yeah. And I used it productively that way to keep people away from me and to keep them at arm's length. And it worked. But I, I became a really bitter, hateful individual. Um, and then I went to college and just split off into a different personality um, yeah. because, you know, we, there was such freedom there that we did not experience growing up in a military home yeah. and, and took me or until the home. time. Yeah. yeah. When, it took me until the time I married my husband, Gail to, um, he was the first person who ever loved me the, exactly the way I was. I weighed 296 pounds when we got married. You remember you sang at the wedding. I did. You guys laughed at me when I sang, or you were laughing. But you did such a that. beautiful job. And <laughs> and so then I... Good save. <laughs> in his loving me, I slowly began to love the person that I was. And my health then became a very great concern to me because I wanted to have children. So I began this journey of weight loss. And my first mistake was believing that the only way I could achieve that was surgically. 
And so in 2001, I had gastric bypass surgery right after Corey was born and he's 26 now. He, I weighed 396 and a half pounds the morning he was born. Oh, wow. And so I had the surgery. How tall? I had, do what? How tall are you? Five, two. Yeah. And so I found out a lot of things after having this done. I quickly lost about 250 pounds. And I felt like a million dollars. I did not recognize, however, though, that my predisposition to um, addiction was going to be a turning factor in my life as well. I did become addicted to opiates, <clears throat> and that's been a battle that I fought about 10 years after that surgery. And it is also a common denominator in many nurses who have the same surgery that I did. Mm -hmm. Gina, I'm sure oh, wow. you've read the research. I've been so, involved. you know... I yeah. had another battle to overcome, um, but I did that yeah. and I survived it and I learned Amazing. from it. And now I can take that to the table for other people as well. Um, I'm very <laughs> active was in that, the community. Was that a way, do you think that you, you lost all of that weight mm -hmm. and that, that protection that was around you was no longer there? Was, it was no longer there. Was it substituting uh, was it bringing another protection? Oh, that's a good question. Barrier? Well, it was a substitute, but, um, you know, wow. people who have never experienced that type or that level of chemical addiction, and like I said, we are very much genetically predisposed in our that's family. Um, <clears throat> you don't recognize what's happening, and it's very empowering. Opiates are extremely empowering. I'm on TV right now. <laughs> Dad's yelling at me. I'm still on the broadcast. I'll holler at you in a minute. Tell him we have 13,000 viewers or yeah. 13. He we'll can't hear. So, but anyway, <laughs> opiates are very empowering. So I felt like superwoman. Like I okay. went through RN school and worked full time and became the wow. first psychiatric certified nurse in the state. And I pioneered programs in Ohio and Kentucky. And I just felt like superwoman. But the thing that kept me going was an endless prescription. And the psychiatrist I worked for freely gave those to me. Oh, wow. Because I became head nurse of the psychiatric unit uh, here in Beckley. And uh, that was a demise. Um, and, you know, you can't go on that way until it finally catches up with you and destroys you. And it did. Nearly destroyed my family. Wow. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of shame in that. Um, I went through a lot of mortification and, uh, but again, you know, praises be to God that he always, he, you know, when a, when a, when a door shuts, a window opens. And um, that's happened to me so countless many times that this is what has brought me to this epiphany that I'm experiencing now in a mental, physical, and spiritual way that I never would have thought possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you're you're it's amazing. You're a Klein for heaven's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> there's you some know, there's some fortitude. I'm, I'm amazed at what I'm hearing is this amazing resiliency that's in you, and that is a thread that runs through all of us. Yes. You know, the yes. We have strong bones, sure. girls. Strong bones. Yes. <laughs> we do. Yes. It's amazing we do. Compassion. You don't know it, but we do. We yeah. do. Um, you know, We've had to. Right of people and this resiliency to just keep getting back up. You know, got to get back up. If you knock me down, that's okay. I'm getting back up. And I'm going to go. It, it might take me a minute because I'm 56, yeah. but I am going to stand again. And I might look <laughs> a real mess when I get up. But That's I'm right. Up. <laughs> yeah. you know, I I've had some I of those hard say, cries. I want to do, I want to say, I want to correct something that you said, if I may. Uh, you said that there's a lot of shame in that. And Very much. As a nurse. There might be a lot of, uh, there, there might be a lot of self uh, guilt or self um, dis disappointment in self, but shame is something that somebody else or other situations place on you. Mm -hmm. uh, and just don't, don't take that on. You have had to take on much. Yeah. Your yeah. Life. And shame is Boy. not something that you should ever, ever take on. Feeling you know, I've, I've learned that I... 
I have some really broad shoulders. I have some really broad shoulders and uh, I attribute mm-hmm. that to our raising. I mean, you know, we were. Yep. Our dads, my, our dads were our, strong and they married powerful women. Let me tell they you. They did. Yeah. And you know, that's yeah. a deadly combination when you have babies. <laughs> I mean, it is. I'm here it to is. Tell you. We, there's I just think nothing, about the stuff. Nothing that can I, defeat us. Nothing. I think nothing. about the stuff that our mom's gone through. Um, yeah. Being a pastor's wife. Can you imagine how hard that is? So not well, only not do you have to that, deal with your family, but everybody else's emotions, and then they get to talk about you and slam you and judge you. Not all of them I, did that. We had a lot of people who didn't do that, but she went through yeah. some serious hell being yeah. a pastor's wife. Well, let me tell you something else you probably don't know, but I know your mother oh, will dear. confirm it's true. Our grandmother didn't love us either. No. And now, no. I mean, that's that's bold and brass, but it's a dead truth. Now, she loved her no. grandsons. She did not love her grandson. Wow, that is so confusing. Let me tell you when this became a reality to me. I had married yeah. my husband, and we took a trip. Dad and I took a trip to Cincinnati, where my uncle gave us a waterbed. We decided to come back by Granny's house and stop and say hi. It was along our route. Well, Granny was out in the smokehouse, and when we pulled in the driveway, I ran inside to go to the bathroom. And let me tell you what I found. Every picture, and you know how many pictures Granny had? She had all of the house. Family pictures, so forth. Every face in every picture that was one of our mothers or a granddaughter was taped over with masking tape. Wow. And I was so angry that I took every one of those pictures and took the tape off of them and lined them up in, on her bed. <laughs> yes, That's sir, awesome. I did. I did. There you go. And I thought, you, go. Th- you ain't going to do this to me. You ain't no. going to do this to me. No. Regina has a story that's pretty interesting, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, being the, being one of the boys in the family, we didn't experience, uh, she, she loved certain cousins better than others and all that stuff. And she had gone through living hell in Southern West Virginia mm-hmm. and beaten to the point where she was dead underneath the kitchen table and uh, some other horrible abusive stuff from our grandfather that you talked about uh, mm-hmm. did to her. And it affected her like massively. And so then there was an incident that happened and I probably won't won't talk about now, but it caused her to um, not be able to relate to women and girls and all that for the rest of her life. That's right. She admitted that to a point to me. And I I talked to her about this because I was concerned about knowing her rapport with with my cousins, with Regina and all of it. And it was bothering me. And she, she confided that and talked about that a little bit. But there was a breaking point for me as much as I, you know, loved her in the way that she could receive it and Mm -hmm. what she showed and what she showed to me. When I found out all this stuff going on with how she was treating the women and the girls in the family, there's this huge, there's a lot of guilt. It's not Mm -hmm. survivor's guilt, but there's a lot of guilt because I'm like, why am I okay with this? Why she's hurting people that I love. Regina had an incident where she went and she brought her new family, the new baby, and the whole thing went to the house and she overheard her grandmother talking on the phone about her and just being really rude yeah. on the phone. Of and course. Um, when Regina told me about that, I had gone to visit her uh, before that and whatever. But when, when she told me about that, it hit me r- right down to the core of my heart. And I went yep. into a grieving process as if my grandmother had died because I could That's not true. reconcile that she treated my sister that way. And it just infuriated me. I never, you know, I never again, connected with her again after that. It One identifies time, in how our opinions of these people whom we are taught to love. Now, my mother's side of the family couldn't be any more opposite, but I forgive my grandmother, our father's Mm -hmm. mother, because she was also raped. And she was abused beyond anything. Yes. She was was abused in ways that animals have never suffered. She was raped with pop bottles. Wow. Yeah. That's what kind of 
preacher. Oh, God. She was married. You're going to make me cry again. I just can't believe I mean, you know, so I forgive her because I fully understand that on a level that, and I think God yeah. takes care of people like Granny. You know, Granny only had an eighth grade education. She married out of convenience to get out of where she was. And it was very she fled situated. when he was in the prison and went to Ohio yeah. and yeah. took her family with her. And she told me after uh, her husband, Vernon, that she married after the divorce and she married mm -hmm. Vernon, who was a high school principal. When he mm -hmm. died, she was terrified. She was yeah. worried that Ed, her husband, was going to come and find her. She was yeah. terrified. And he died that year. He, that was, he died just right after that. Thank God. I, we were all thankful because she, she didn't have to worry that he was going to come and hurt her anymore. Right. She carried that her whole life. Well, um, it, you know, I remember yeah. mom telling us when things happened and um, he finally left here, we had to have police protection for a while because my dad was afraid he wow. was would return. And so when wow. we caught the bus, my mom had to sit in the vehicle with us until the bus came every day. My gosh. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. That's true. Yeah. I have to tell so, you, your story, Anita, has... It, it, um, thank you for having the nerve and the strength yes. to share that. And, and just so... We're clients, dude. <laughs> well, it's, it's having an impact. People who are, who are listening, and like a, there's a comment that people have gone through stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them is, is just posted. It says, this happened to me at a very, as I was a very young boy, and I believe it shaped my life uh, mm -hmm. to a degree. How can it, it not? Does. How can it not? Oh, yeah. It'll change your life for sure. Yeah. And you turned out to be this amazing person that just goes to the depths of whatever yeah. it takes to help someone. Praise yeah. be to God. That's all I can I say. I know. I know. I wouldn't it's true. Be There's here. a light. There yeah. is a light in us. Yeah. And uh, people wonder where my smile comes from. And that's, that's where it is. You know, it's in that light. Isn't it? And we're, so, we're also connected on such a level. I mean, look at the distance and miles that separates the three of us. But and, we can and come together in milliseconds and we're kids again. And it's so good to experience love on that level. And it's real and it's genuine. And we'll always be there to each, for each other until we're not. And then we'll be there yep. for eternity, you know. And that's what keeps me stepping every day, you know. Um, wow. So this guy said, uh, it's Bob. He's like, you know, the cycle was broken and, and your kids, those kids are blessed now. So yeah, they you are. Know, your kids and Regina's kids and um, mom's kids like us. Yeah. You know, they, well, they worked and, hard to keep us protected. They did. And we're very blessed and fortunate to have mothers of that. Unbelievable grit you know that's real grit when you put up it with things grit. like that because you love somebody that much and i know your mother yeah. loved your dad and i know my mother loved my dad yeah we miss your you mom you can't buy that man you can't buy it you can't yeah. your mom phyllis was just she's just a part of our life you know what's really interesting now that dad is, has passed um with all that and we can talk about that again in another show but um <clears throat> with them with them passing and all that changing and all that stuff I just didn't think that I had no idea what grief was like to mm -hmm. that level and um when I when I when he passed I walked outside and I looked up from that cabin that we're with your your dad James and mm -hmm. and all that and Corey and, and I looked up and I saw the stars and I felt dad almost physically in the stars. I felt him there. It was the I most powerful, overwhelming thing. Yeah. And I, I still feel dad around. Now here, and, and a lot of people talk about it. It's not just wishful thinking. I tell you, I swear it's not on the stack of Bibles. It is that I feel dad. And Regina has talked about that. My mom has, mom has talked about that. Um, it's like he's, I, I can't talk about dad in the past tense, not because I haven't accepted that he, his physical body died, it did. I mean, immediately yeah. I knew that, but I feel him. It's like he's, his presence is really very real and around. It sounds nuts, but it's just true. So I rarely ever talk about that in the past tense because it's almost mm -hmm. like me talking to you right now. I was like, yeah, Anita, you were such a great cousin. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be so rude. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. And that'll be true someday. I mean, you know, but 
I used to fear yeah. that time, but not anymore. I, I really? so look forward to, you know, that kind of eternity. And uh, I mean, um, I know I'll get to see my mom again. I know I get to yeah. see my husband again. And yeah. all the people that have gone on, we're very fortunate to have strong Christian roots. And no, we are. We are very blessed to know that those people are exactly where they're supposed to be. Well, you know, there's one thing I have to say uh, to your, your husband who passed Gail. Um, when I get to heaven, I'm, I have a very important thing I need to tell him and talk to him about. Um, really? When we, yeah, the last time I saw him, when we were all together in the house, we're all goofed off. He looked, around, <laughs> he looked around the kitchen. He's like, he's like, Linda, my gosh, it's so great to see you. You just look awesome, Regina. Wow, look at you. I can't believe you. And then he gets to me. He's like, Troy, because what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's so gale also, you know. it's so gale it <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it to him when i get there i'm gonna tell him i'm gonna yeah uh, i'll tell you what happened to me uh, he, was, he was a wonderful wonderful hilarious guy he was a great but man. um well i'm looking forward to meeting this uh new new creature feature in your life so yeah. uh yeah we'll see you your wedding again anita uh, we will. I want you to. Actually, it's going to be a. Uh, It'll be a different song this it's time. It's going to be a cowboy mm. hoedown kind of thing. Oh, and awesome! I, I, and cool. I'll leave you with this because my phone's going to die. Um, I picked out the song that I'm going to make my dad dance to, and it's so bizarre because I just happened upon this the other day as I was traveling. It's called "My Daddy Said Shoot." And it's actually a combination with Beyonce and the Dixie Chicks. Oh, oh! You have I to listen to this. Wait. It fits my dad to a T. I can't it wait. It fits my dad to a T. So I'm gonna make him wow. dance with me. To my daddy said, "Shoot!" <laughs> I love that. I love that. And yeah. then just hearing your dad's voice when he laughs. Yeah. Uh, I have to tell you, it's hard for us. I have to I have to take a breath when I call James when I've called him exactly he sounds like dad and then yeah. when uh he laughs it's exactly dad as a matter of fact the the, the day that they're dad almost passed, like twins they Except are I mean I thought calling. dad's voice I thought dad was in the other room because I heard That's that true. laugh and I'm like I, I just couldn't even believe it I love that I love, love this love is that. no lie when whenever I was around your dad I always thought uncle Mac smelled like my dad like they have yeah this they scent. smell like squirrels <laughs> i guess or, or deer scent or something what is it they put on they deer pee or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they were definitely woodsy people and that's just so, my favorite smell these days i like woodsy everything all my colognes have wood smell to them or earth smell. I, i'm the same i am not a flower yeah, person yeah. and i think that's no. why because you know we grew up so. with that and you become so accustomed to it and you know scent is a very powerful memory trigger Boy. and Ooh, um, i have even been in my house before and smelled gale yeah. um when my boys are together with me and on either side of me, I experience his spirit in a way that is just unreal because they yep. both possess the very best of his personality. They really and do. And they're both very good men. And I'm just so proud of them. I don't know what I did to be so blessed, but I'm so proud of them. You got back oh, there. Well, you've got grit. <laughs> you got grit. You have grit. That's right. <laughs> you got grit. Well, hey, you know what? You're not going to believe it, but it is an hour. We went on here an hour and 15 minutes. So our 15-minute wow. show usually drags on for a few extra minutes. So. <laughs> I'm um, so you know. happy that you guys asked me to be on. And uh, I oh, couldn't we'll have, have again. had any more fun. I really couldn't have. It was a perfect well, next time, a perfect day. It was well, next time thing. we'll get into the stories of the farm and uh, okay, yeah, all that. And what all we burned in the fireplace. Those stories. Those were fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that. We'll save that. Oh, that's a that's a bird of a different feather right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some serious things that disappeared from planet Earth uh, while the grandkids were on the farm. Oh, but... yeah. Wow, wow. Um, yes, plus, the farmhouse almost went up in smoke, and that's another yes, story. I blame Robert. That's for another that. story. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. We All did. Right. We did that well, too. We, love you. we did it. We did it. <laughs> 
Oh, we love you. And thanks for being on with us. And we'll, we'll I love you guys time. too. And you know, I'm only a phone call away. I know it. And after COVID, we'll, we'll all have a big, we got to do the reunion. Well, we got to do a reunion. I'm dying I to now. I really am. <laughs> You know, and, and you have right. to come to the wedding. You have to have cowboy boots because we'll be, it's going to be foot stomping, I've cowboy got tromping. Yeah. Have ox blood cowboy boots in a closet with a hat. So we're actually having a, a roasted pig and a side of beef with all the fixings. Well, oh, mold, nice. mold cider. And uh, we're thinking mid October. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's coming right on up. Yeah. That's all awesome. not wow. solid yet, not set in cement, but you know, we've been talking so. Well, if COVID's still around, it's good to have a cowboy themed wedding because we it's all outside, wear those it's all outside. Around he our masks. Has, uh, suggested we get a circus tent and it's all going to be outdoors, so perfect. we're, we're, good. That'll we're be good. good. Sounds perfect. All right, and a mechanical bull, which you must ride <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah, well, huh? Yeah, we'll talk about that. I'll take that. Bill. Oh boy. Better have like a bouncy room for me to land on because mm. yeah, we will, we will. Yeah. All right. Well, we love, I love you. you guys. We'll see you soon. Love you. All, all right. right. Goodbye, everybody. We love all of you. Miss you. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. <laughs>